Hello and welcome to Accent Excellence. I'm Chuck Leyenberger and coming up on this month's show we're going to explain how these students here at the Burton Center for Arts and Technology are learning all about nursing careers. Also we'll have some important reminders about flu shots so don't go anywhere. We're moving forward with Accent Excellence next. The Roanoke County Sheriff's Office presents the AVOID program, a personal safety class designed to help citizens with information, tips and tricks to help gain awareness of their surroundings, strategies to help plan for the unexpected, and the confidence to deal with encounters that may arise in order to enhance personal safety. The cost of the class is 10 canned goods or non-perishable items which will be collected at the beginning of the class. Registration is on a first-come, first-served basis. For more info, call 540-283-3107. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're at the Burton Center for Arts and Technology, and joining me, of course, is Jason Sir. He's our Director of Career and Technical Education, and we'd like to introduce Karen Zimmerman. She is new and sort of new returning to Roanoke County Public Schools. We'll talk about that in a minute, but Karen, you are here with a brand new course here at Roanoke County Public Schools, here at Burton, and it's all about nursing. So what's going on with all these students here? This is exciting. These students came in not knowing anything about the nursing field. They um, are juniors and seniors at all of our area high schools that have expressed interest in a career in the healthcare field. And in nine weeks, they have learned certain skills that you can perhaps see some of what's going on behind me. Most recently, um, transferring skills. They are learning about PPE, protective um, personal equipment, that some of our students are wearing and the prevention of and spread of germs and infection control. Then we also have students behind me that are doing vital signs, um, all kinds of things nursing. So Jason, this is all about a brand new program that we have just started here at Roanoke County Public Schools and again housed here at Burton. It's Introduction to Nursing Careers. How did this all get started? How did we get to students here in our own nursing lab? Well, we already had a, a healthcare pathway begun with our EMT program that began a couple years back. We also realized that there was a need for in the nursing field for um, students to understand the nursing career pathway, not just with the CNA level of um, education, but hoping that this will get them a jump start towards uh, furthering their careers and credentials. So this all and this all began with um, kind of a, a good collaboration of uh, folks here in the valley. Uh, we are fortunate to have partnered with Carillion. Uh, Karen has come on board, do a great job there. Of course, the Claude Moore Charitable Foundation is involved with helping support the program. And I don't want to leave out our school board. Our school board's been very supportive. And this program also is not just here at Burton. We have another partner who quite literally and quite conveniently is just down the road who was helping out as well. Who's that? Exactly. Salem Health and Rehabilitation is just up the street here on Roanoke Boulevard. And they jumped on uh, immediately when we asked and said, we would love to partner with you to provide the clinical experiences for the students in the program. So, you know, kind of just, Karen, describe that. So, you know, students, of course, they have a lab experience here, but then literally heading just down the road, real world experience. Indeed, that is true and that's something that we emphasize while the students are practicing in the skills laboratory, which is this classroom, we emphasize the fact that you're learning here, make your mistakes here, get your confidence built up here because in very short order we're going to be dealing with residents that are depending upon mm -hmm. us to provide than the assistance they need for their activities of daily living. We need to do it safely, we need to do it efficiently, um, and we need to promote health in that arena. And it's, the lab is, a, is, as you said, is a great experience, but there's nothing like doing this for real with real patients, is it? That's exactly right, and these people are so dependent upon us. CNAs are the eyes and ears of all of the other healthcare providers and these students will be learning observational skills and being able to identify change of condition as they work with their patients, providing them activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. These patients depend upon us to provide them with that assistance. So it's a valuable um, role to play in the healthcare arena. And, and Jason, Karen just mentioned it's CNAs, and for those who, who might not know, the CNA, that is a, a, a certified nursing assistant, 
that's where this all leads to, doesn't it? That's correct, and that's a credential. Of course, credentials are a big push uh, in education at the K-12 level as well as post-secondary, but uh, this is a credential we feel like will benefit these students. And also, uh, we hope that many of the students will choose this as a launching point into furthering their careers in the healthcare pathway. Uh, it, it might lead to uh, students earning their RN uh, down the line. So that is our hope, that we build that workforce that um, uh, and then the students can get their start right here right here in high school. Karen the demand mm -hmm. for for nursing in all sorts of medical fields but the, the demand for nurses though is tremendous and it continues to grow doesn't it? Yes it does and one of the primary areas of need is for the CNA level. Um, as Jason mentioned this is often a launching point into pursuing other areas of um, healthcare providers. A lot of my students do plan to go on to become RNs. Some even plan to go on to advanced nursing practices. But the CNA is a role that, so it transitions quite often. There's always need. These students can go anywhere across the state and literally in our region um, with compact states, their certification will allow them to work in a regional area beyond even the state of Virginia. And, and earlier, of course, at the beginning, you know, Karen, we said welcome to Roanoke County, but in many respects we said welcome back because, you know, you're actually coming back to us. You I spent am. some time in Herman L. Horn with us. I did. Yes, I was a school nurse for 12 years at Herman L. Horn. So what does it feel like coming back and, 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 and now tr kind of transitioning from being a school nurse to <laughs> being a nurse teacher? Yes, it's been interesting. Um, the students are challenging. Students are constantly demanding the best of their teachers. You have to be prepared for just about anything. Mm -hmm. It's been very enjoyable. Well, we're thrilled with that program, but Jason, there's so much more because this is just year one. Coming up next, though, is year two. That's right, and we're hoping to build the program out so that students earn their CNA uh, license in the beginning of or at the end of the first year mm -hmm. but then build uh, further credentialing and opportunities for students to get into the uh, investigating more of what they want to do in the second year of the program so we're going to build that out and speaking of building already so we're, we're into just the first few months of the program and we've actually already started to outgrow the space it's expanding <laughs> right. as we speak right now right we're looking at expanding across the actually across the wall right here into uh, the learning area next door and remain with this as the lab area. So it has been a successful, very successful program. Uh, you know, Karen, where do you see this going? Uh, you know, <laughs> think about the opportunities that, that these students could potentially have as they complete this program and, and leave high school and leave and, and go on to, to further training. Mm -hmm. Well, the sky's the limit, really. Um, these students are going to be well positioned to pursue other certifications, such as EKG technician or phlebotomy technician, um, or go on and pursue educational opportunities in a, a community college with an associate's degree and a wide array of healthcare options. Um, and they're expressing a lot of interest in a lot of different things, and we're hoping, hoping to position our program to um, give them leverage into those opportunities. Well, it's a fantastic program. It's the new program here uh, at Burton. It's Introduction to Nursing Careers. And uh, we hope, you know, students, if you are interested, be looking at it. Registration guides are, are coming out very soon, so you could be registering uh, for this program for the coming school year. Karen, again, mm -hmm. welcome back to Roanoke County you. Public Schools. And Jason, congrats on starting another very successful and, and, and frankly, badly needed program to support the workforce here in the Roanoke Valley and beyond. Thanks. Thanks so much for being with us. And folks, stay right there. We have a lot more accent excellence still to come.
Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. Joining me is Gerald Holmes. He's the treasurer of the Education Foundation here at uh, Roanoke County Public Schools. And Gerald, you know, we're, it's an exciting time. It's always an exciting time for the foundation, but we're very, very busy right now. We're in the middle of getting ready to award a lot of money in grants to classroom teachers. The Golden Apple Award nomination period is open and coming up around the corner. Student scholarships, so much happening right now here at the Education Foundation. Of course, it all comes with support uh, from the community. So we'll kind of start at the beginning and talk about the teacher grant scholarship program. Oh, that, the, the teacher grant program or the uh, selection, selection process is, is currently underway. Uh, we've got some members here today, and it's an exciting time. I've, I've been with the organization three years, and it's been the most exci exciting and fulfilling uh, obligation that we have. Mm -hmm. The scholarships for the students in the spring and for the teacher grant for the, uh, the Golden Apple Awards. Uh, the, the teachers love it. The community loves it. Uh, it's really exciting for uh, the Roanoke County school system. So. So, you know, you've been sitting in the, in the room and evaluating all of these different projects. And to kind of recap, you know, teachers each year in Roanoke County submit various project ideas, and the foundation awards um, some of those in the form of, of grants to teachers. Some of these projects are amazing, aren't they? They are. I, I tell you, I am impressed every year when we go through the application process just to look at the information that's on the application from the teachers, uh, some of the projects that they want their students to participate in, especially when it comes to uh, STEM, mm -hmm. the programs within the Roanoke County, and the fact that we have some highly educated individuals in the Roanoke County school system. But furthermore, we've got teachers that really, really want to stretch their mm -hmm. students, and I think that's that's something that's much needed. Now, now I don't know about you, but and I, and I participate in this as well. To be honest, when I read through these, I actually get kind of jealous because I wanted this when I was back in school just a, just a few years ago. I mean, I almost want to go do these projects. Oh, we were, we were late bloomers. I, the thing is that we, that you see now, the applications, the, the, the design of the projects, the, mm -hmm. the creativity, um, the, uh, the, the cognitive ability of our kids nowadays and what the teachers bring to the table, um, it didn't exist yesterday. Yeah. We, we know that. It, it didn't exist. And now we've really, really seen what um, the environment, the changes over time and the school system, what it has led to. And I think that's a part of why we see what mm -hmm. we see. And every year, as I, as I mentioned earlier, this is my third year, we, we're seeing some, some real serious stuff going to this, some real critical thinking going into what these teachers want to achieve with their classrooms. And it's, and it's a very competitive process. Unfortunately, can't, can't award every single one. Yeah, and that's the, that's the downside to the whole process. Um, you know, if we could fund all of these, we would, uh, because I really think it's good for the schools, it's good for the students, uh, and you don't want to stifle anybody's mm -hmm. uh, creativity uh, or their cognitive ability. However, uh, we got our hands tied to some degree. Uh, therefore, it's, it's great that we can reach out to our community partners uh, both the community and corporate mm -hmm. um, for, for funding as the year goes on um, through different things that we do, golf tournaments and things of that nature, um, even anonymous donor. We, yep. we, we'll take any funding that we can get because it's all going to good use. Uh, not only with the teacher grant sel uh, selections um, and what they're going to be teaching in the classroom, but for the student scholarships yeah. when they come up in the spring. Uh, we award a great many and a, a lot of money yeah. And as you said, opening up, it's exciting to give away money. Yeah. Uh, being a college graduate and knowing what the, the cost of school is, every little bit helps. Yeah. Uh, so we reach out whenever we can to the community. Almost $80,000 a year that we hand out in student scholarships. But if we were able to fund every single one, I mean, we'd need so much more, wouldn't we? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I do believe that the program of the foundation is growing yearly. And I think we will continue to grow because I think the community really see the success of the program. And, and it's, we're good stewards of the money. Mm -hmm. The grants and the scholarships, they really go to good use. And uh, we can only build on that. And with individuals such as myself and some of my partners here on the board, um, it's just a way for us to continue to give back and continue to reach out. And if I had never been nominated to be in this position, I would have known any, none, nothing about the foundation. So uh, I thank my neighbor for getting me involved. So, uh, and with that, I reach out to individuals that I know in the community, and they have supported us, supported us in one mm -hmm. way or the other. So, we'll continue to do that. And even more, 
coming up right now, nomination period, speaking of nominations, is open right now for our annual Golden Apple Award. We're looking for the best teacher in Roanoke County Public Schools. Absolutely, and we, we welcome all the applications and nominations, and uh, I look forward to that process. And that's really, really exciting for us, and that comes up here uh, in November. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. coming up right in the very yeah. soon. And so again, nomination period is open yeah. right now. And I'll tell you what, I don't envy this guy's job because <laughs> he's part of the selection committee and probably of all the selections that we do between teacher scholarships, student scholarships, that one may be the toughest. It, it is tough, It's, but it's very re rewarding. It's very rewarding to be able to uh, read the nominees, uh, read the information, see some of the videos uh, that they provide uh, in the classroom setting and what they're teaching their kids and see the excitement of mm -hmm. the kids. Uh, it's unbelievable what you see in the classrooms and, and, and most individuals don't see this on a day-to-day -day uh, you know, yeah. basis. So it's exciting to see that. It does make it tough though with some of the nominees. There are quite a few great, great teachers. A lot of great teachers and tough to, tough to choose just one uh, best teacher of the year. Uh, very quickly though, you know, as we talked about needing, we always could use more support. Yes. How can folks support the foundation? I, uh, we have an application process, or you can, we can call Roanoke County Public Schools. Uh, you can reach your, you see Chuck's, uh, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck's face everywhere. So uh, either through the school system, the principals, uh, PTAs, uh, get involved. Uh, if you know anyone that's interested, get involved, especially from a funding standpoint. Uh, and support not only the school system itself, but any of the events that the foundation puts mm -hmm. on. Uh, we have uh, a marathon, we have the golf tournament. Yep. Uh, if you're part of a organization, a corporate entity, uh, when we do reach out, feel free to, any amount will do, mm -hmm. because it all adds up. And it's all for a great cause. It is for an excellent cause, and as Gerald mentioned, coming up in March is our annual backpack run, and we're telling you first, it's always a 5K, but this year, we're doubling it. We're also going to be offering a 10K. That's right, a 10K. So be looking for more information on our new Backpack Run 5K and 10K. That's coming up in March. Gerald, thank you so much thank for you. all of your service to the Education Foundation. And we want you to stay right there because we have a lot more accent excellence still to come. A house will always look like a house. But what makes a house a home? Laughter. <laughs> Kindness. Oh, there it is. Love. Hope. Family. <laughs> Could you provide a home to a local youth in need? Learn more about foster care today and help make a house a home. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We've come to the Burton Center for Arts and Technology, and joining me again is Charlene Vale. She's our uh, head of health services here in Roanoke County Public Schools. And Charlene, we're coming into winter. It's just around the corner, and that means we're getting into flu season. It's about that time. Yes, we are, and you should all be getting your flu shots. That's exactly <laughs> what we're talking about. So flu shots. So, you know, for, for, for parents and for students, uh, and really for staff members and anybody, why a flu shot? Why is it so important? to help prevent spreading the disease around, to help prevent you from getting the flu yourself and from spreading it to other people. That seems like that's, that's, a, that's a fairly simplistic thought, but there's much, much more to it than just the whole point of, of keeping it from spreading. You know, there's also keeping kids in school at the same time. Keeping kids in school, keeping people at their jobs and working. So where do people go get their flu shots? They can see their physician, they can go to area pharmacies, Carillion is having clinics, um, I'm sure the ho any hospital. Mm -hmm. and, so, and most of them are, are covered by, by insurance uh, as well, and so definitely go and, and talk to your, to, okay. your, to your doctor. Absolutely. So as we're, we're looking at flu shots, of course, you know, there are a couple of myths out there, um, and you know, kind of one of the most common is, I don't want to get the flu shot, it's going to give me the flu myth. It's a myth. <laughs> the flu shot is not, it's not a live virus, so you cannot get the flu from the vaccine. Um, sometimes it makes you feel a little off and people think they might be getting the flu, mm -hmm. but if you get the flu after the flu shot, you've already been exposed to it, and it's not from the flu vaccine. Anything else that, that, that folks need to be thinking about um, before they get the flu shot, like if they are experiencing any sort of 
symptoms beforehand that might keep them from getting a flu shot at that particular they, time. If you're, if you're sick or have a cold or something, they will make you wait to get your flu vaccine, yes. Why is it important to do this now? A lot of people will, will wait until you're starting to hear so much about, oh, everybody's got the flu now. It's really important to go ahead and get your flu shot now in advance. So you have the, it takes a while for the immunity to build, so you need to have it in your system before the actual flu starts spreading around. So while we're here, and of course, as we said, you know, winter is coming, flu season's coming, colds, sniffles, all those other things. One other piece that we wanted to talk about was the importance of keeping your child home when they're sick. Why is that so important? Number one, to help them get better faster and also to prevent it from spreading to other children. But there's a lot of things we can do. We can, um, you know, obviously stay home when you're sick, mm -hmm. but also um, don't hang out with someone who is sick. Try to stay away from somebody who has the flu. Um, washing your hands mm -hmm. frequently, um, coughing and sneezing into your arm or into a tissue rather than just out. Um, it seems like very simple little things, but, but they can make a huge difference when it comes to, to keeping things from mm -hmm. spreading. Absolutely. You, I mean, you can prevent it. You know, washing your hands can help get rid of the virus on your hands. And, you know, you touch your eyes, your mouth, your nose. Those are all entryways mm -hmm. to give you the flu and get the virus. But if you're washing your hands and avoid touching your nose and mouth and eyes, you now can prevent the spread, too. There are some parents that, that are, and, and some students that are, that are firm believers of, well, I, I've got to go to school, you know, I, oh, perfect attendance, all these kind of things. It's okay, right? It's okay. <laughs> we would rather your child stay home and get better. They're they're going to be better prepared to learn if they're feeling well. They're not they're not going to be at mm -hmm. their par when they're feeling that miserable with the flu. They need to stay home and get better. And it, what's even worse is that you know, not only, of course, are you getting uh, potentially getting kids sick, but you could be getting staff sick as well. That's true. And then yeah. our teachers are out. And, and then, and then that, that disrupts instruction for everybody. Right, so, right. you know, so the simple fact is get your flu shot, and okay. if you're sick, it's okay to stay home. Absolutely. So <laughs> for parents, so when is it time to send my child back to school? I've kept them home, but when are they ready to come back? Well, if they've had a fever, they should be fever-free without medication for 24 hours before they come back. If, if they're feeling miserable and they don't have a fever, they should still stay home because you may not get the fever, a fever mm -hmm. with the flu. So if you're miserable and, and tired, you should be staying at home and resting. So really, you're fever free for 24 hours and generally feeling better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So again, you know, there's lots of, lots of places, lots of opportunities to, to get your flu shot, talk with your doctor, mm -hmm. uh, or you talk with a, a school nurse as well who can, can help you uh, right, find absolutely. resources. Well, Charlie, thanks so much. Folks, again, washing hands, uh, you know, sneezing and coughing into your arm, simple little things can help keep our schools and keep our students healthy. So stay right there. We have more Accent Excellence still to come. Did you know the Roanoke County Sheriff's Office provides the Identify a Kid program to the public? This free program provides parents with an identification card of their child, including a photograph, name, address, height and weight, blood type, social security number, and other important info. Along with the ID card, upon request, they can also fully fingerprint your child. This program is offered at most civic events that are geared towards children, or you can schedule an appointment. For more info, call 540-283-3107. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're here in the middle of downtown Roanoke right now, and joining me is Sarah Baumgartner from the Water Authority and Ashley Roop, a senior and artist at Williamburg High School. And, and Ashley and Sarah, we're here and we're staring at something really, really incredible on the side of a building. And Ashley, you created this. And in fact, here is the original. Tell me how this particular painting ended up on the side of a building here in downtown Roanoke. Well, I heard that um, the Water Authority was looking for an idea to go on their building, and I decided to submit a piece. So tell me about your piece, and tell me uh, kind of what, what, uh, what led you to this point. Well, I had heard the Water Authority um, wanting, wanted something to go along with their mission statement. Uh, so I decided to paint a picture of Carvin's Cove. Uh, they said they liked the vintage postcard look, mm -hmm. so that's what I went with. So Sarah, you know, the, the Water Authority put out a call and Ashley, Ashley answered. So tell me all about this. 
Well, the Water Authority has a really strong commitment to our Valley's youth. We have a very strong education outreach program to the students in the area schools, and we have the Registered Apprenticeship Program. So extending that idea to inspire and educate young people to art was a natural progression. So we knew we wanted to either have a student or a group of students create a piece of art for our building. And when we saw Ashley's piece that was beautiful, really showcased our water supplies and the beauty of the valley, we said this is what we want. And next thing you know, we take what is, what is here on canvas up to something that is tremendous and but visible for everybody in downtown Roanoke to see. Right, so we started out with 20 by 24 that Ashley had painted and we worked with Fast Signs to digitize it and it is now 24 feet wide by 35 feet long and really a, a beautiful piece for everybody in the valley to enjoy. Okay, so Ashley, looking at what you what you see behind you here versus what you originally created, how does that make you feel to see your artwork not just on display but on display in such a tremendous size? When it went up, I couldn't believe what it looked like. Um, I couldn't believe it looked, um, it just, I don't know. Um, it was, it's, it's amazing and again, you know, just looking at it, you know, Sarah, one of the things also that, that you know, really strikes me uh, and Ashley, both of you, it's just the vibrant colors that you right. see in this particular piece. So tell me about, you know, selecting some of the colors and, and kind of coming up with this idea of Carvin's Cove. So originally I had just had the water, um, the, the trees, and I had more of a gray mountain range mm -hmm. and a blue sky. Um, but then we decided to change it to the sunset and more of a purple mountains to, um, and rounded mountains to make it more like Roanoke, mm -hmm. Roanoke Valley Mountains and um, the sunset so it would be brighter. It's a lot of wonderful creativity and again another part of example of, of the creativity of our students and Sarah, you know, this is just, just round one of what could be multiple opportunities for our students. Right. We had the option of having something painted and be permanent forever on the building, but we went with this idea of printing on the canvas so that we can change out the art. Mm -hmm. And we anticipate in another three or four years when this might start to fade to send out the call again to students and give some other young person the opportunity to, to do something this big um, and enjoy it the way Ashley's enjoyed seeing well, this I'll tell art. You what, it's a tremendous accomplishment both in, in, in the artistic talent but also in, in the physical size. I mean something that is absolutely wonderful and, uh, and as we said can be visible for everybody to see for many years to come. So Ashley again congratulations on such a wonderful piece of work and Sarah again we thank the Water Authority for giving uh, another opportunity for students to showcase uh, all of their skills and folks we want you to stay right there because we have more acts and excellence still to come. If you would like to adopt a pet, did you know that you can also go to the RCACP website and their Facebook page to look at pets for adoption? It's easy to do. Simply go to their website at rcacp.org or visit their Facebook page. Both sites include information and pictures of animals waiting to be adopted. Help make a difference in the life of a pet today. Adopt from the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this month's edition of Acts and Excellence. If you'd like to learn more about Roanoke County Public Schools, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget, you can always watch back issues of Acts and Excellence on our YouTube channel. I'm Chuck Lyonberger. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. It's time for your flu shot.